Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to the garden. Uh, taking a look around at these gorgeous Icelandic poppies. Wanted to just share with you guys some notes that I have from my first ever experience growing these successfully. Um, if you've been following the channel any amount of time, you know that I've tried probably three other times to grow Icelandic poppies. This year I've only had a little bit of success. So, uh, in the past, one of the major mistakes that I've made is trying to grow them from seed. And it's not so much that getting the seed to germinate is insanely difficult, but more so uh, purchasing the correct seed. So, um, one of the main things that was happening to me is I was buying seed that hadn't been primed. Ideally, you want to find seed that is labeled that it has been primed and is ready to germinate. Um, some seeds just have a process that needs to happen before they will readily germinate. And apparently, Icelandic poppies is one of those seeds. Now, I did buy plugs for the Icelandic poppies this year because I was just so sick of failing over and over again. But I did have a packet of seed that I did get some germination from, and they also bloomed, which was good. So basically, what I learned from that whole process is you ideally want to get these seedlings out of their tray as soon as possible. Um, I had a couple trays, I had two trays. One of them got transplanted um, right on time, and the other one, the seedlings stayed in the tray a little bit too long. And by a little bit too long, I mean like a month too long. And basically what happened to those in the hoop house is that those plants were stunted, and when they bloomed, they were about a foot tall, and the flowers were about one inch across. Embarrassing, not what we wanted for cut flowers. Those flowers were in a different low tunnel and a different hoop house, which may have impacted them, but I don't think it would have impacted them to the point that it became a problem like it did. So that's unfortunate. So, so number one, I want to make sure I buy prime seed and I want to make sure that I am right on time with getting them into the garden and helping them to get established before the winter temperatures come. Um, I guess now is a good time also to mention that it's so important to figure out when is the best time to plant these flowers. Now these are cool season flowers, so they obviously have some cold tolerance, but figuring out when to plant them is going to be different for everyone. Honestly, I'm not completely sure about their cold tolerance. Here in my garden, for the first time that I got them to successfully bloom, I was able to overwinter them in an unheated hoop house. I'm in zone 6B7. Um, whether or not you will need an unheated hoop house, I honestly don't know. If you live somewhere warmer, you might be able to try to test their cold tolerance, but if you live somewhere cooler, I definitely wouldn't push my luck with these. Maybe a place that has a very mild summer and mild springtime temperatures could get away with transplanting these into the garden as soon as the soil could be worked in the spring, but for me personally, it gets too hot here. And I have to make sure that I plant these in the fall to get the best bloom possible or it's just not going to happen. And that's how it is for me with a lot of hardy annual cool season flowers is that if I don't plant them in the fall, I'm not going to have a plant that produces flowers that are a good enough quality to use as cut flowers. For a lot of people in a climate similar to mine, this is one of the most frustrating things about growing flowers is because if you plant in the spring, it's too hot, but if you plant in the fall, you have to protect them really well because of the cold temperatures. Overall, I just really enjoyed planting these for the first time. Um, in my hoop house, I usually covered these plants anytime the temperatures got below about 28 degrees Fahrenheit, I covered them with a frost blanket in addition to closing the hoop house. The hoop house was closed throughout the winter except on sunny, sunny days where the temperatures in there would climb very, very steadily. So in general, um, this whole process is just a trial and error, learning to get the temperatures right, making sure that things don't get too cold, making sure that things don't get too hot too soon. And it has definitely been a learning experience, that's for sure. I think my spacing this year was a six inch spacing between each of the plants. And I think that spacing might have been a little bit too close because some of the flowers were on the smaller side. And I think maybe if I had a little bit better spacing, they would have been larger. In general, the stems on these are so strong and tough. I was absolutely just shocked because I thought they would be like delicate and fragile 
because the flowers are so delicate and fragile, but they are very strong. I didn't need any kind of support of a trellis or anything like that. Um, as far as irrigation, I just made sure to water them as needed. Um, throughout the winter, I always avoid watering. I never water when temperatures are below freezing, simply because the combination of water and cold is just, you know, a recipe for rot, and I don't want that to happen in the greenhouse, that's for sure. That's really about it for this video. I hope it was a little bit helpful. I'm not quite sure if it was. If it was, um, be sure to subscribe if you're new. I'd love to have you. Making new videos all the time. I hope that you guys are having an amazing day, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye, guys.